Hello, how are you doing? Welcome back to some more Grand Prix World and another part of our Sauber Let's Play. It was an absolute blockbuster episode last time out, so go and check that out if you haven't already. Um, really, really enjoyed it. Hopefully you guys did too. Um, but we are back in the midst of Season 4 and things are going really, really well. We seem to have a very good car in the race this season. Our qualifying pace, top 10, you know, not bad. But in the race, we are definitely consistent point scorers. We're currently in third in the Constructors' standings. I'm really, really happy about that. And, of course, last time out at Monaco, we had an awesome, awesome Grand Prix where we managed to finish in third and fourth. Absolutely brilliant from Denise and Barrichello. If you have a little look at the uh, lap times, Denise had the fourth quickest lap time. Not too far off Damon Hill there uh, you can see that the sort of way it changed throughout the race um, and actually I find this really really interesting um, Barrichello seemed to go down to ninth on the first lap there um, sort of by pit stop time it had perhaps gone up, but it, it, it's difficult to really tell what what happened um, in the end. Because uh, they didn't finish 7th and 8th. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Because <laughs> uh, 3rd is, is up there. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure how that works, really. There's the grid. There's the podium. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, I'm just looking through new screens, but uh, yeah, we're gonna just save the game because it is feeling a little bit laggy. But uh, let's have a little look at the news. So Ferrari has completed a team sponsorship deal with Murano. Williams has completed a team sponsorship deal with Winfried. Mick hackman has got another race win. Damon Hill led the grid. Deniz is happy with third but wants to do better. Uh, Barrichello just missed out on the podium. McLaren have signed a landmark works deal with Ford. Sauber's uh, got a landmark works deal with Ferrari, which is brilliant. Arrows has done a deal to sign uh, Mario Haberfeld. Um, Benetton has signed uh, Mini Champs. Uh, anything else there? No. Okay. Uh, we made a loss of 377 grand. Staff losses have demoralised the, the departments. We're ready to upgrade this year's cars. We should construct the new designs as soon as possible. That's fine. I really don't care about testing. Ready to upgrade our car internal technology. Okay. Uh, we got a new engine deal. That's fine. Or engine supplied. Uh, we are going to pretty much max that out, I think. Our excellent race performance has given us a race advantage. Very good. Uh, Goodyear has offered us a partner deal. We've got even better terms with Ferrari already. Good progress with the talks with mobile. We've worked with PlayStation and uh, we're finding out what their terms are. Okay, good. Right, let's see if we can beef out the commercial department at all. Not this round, unfortunately. Nope. I don't think it's worth bringing in those for now. We are really trying to just beef out the the strongest uh, um, the departments were the, the strongest candidates really which might come to bite us in the bottom later on however I, I do think that we're going to get a, a decent deal from the, the FIA this time uh, we're going to skip over the engineering I'm going to go straight to our commercial dealings so PlayStation at 1.9 million a one season deal I think we can we can do that uh, very, very close to the works deal with Mobile. 
Um, I'm actually going to play a TV advantage on that, and I'm going to play our success card on the Goodyear deal. Ferrari have already given us fast engine upgrades. We want control of the R&D. That's what we're really wanting there. Um, we're going to bring... Who are we gonna? Are we gonna bring place? I, I don't think we are. I don't think we are at this stage. We're just gonna try and accelerate it a little bit with our TV advantage. Um, we're gonna scale down our VIP offering um, just that little bit. Montreal's a pretty good one, so I am gonna keep it at a reasonable level just to give us a chance. But we certainly got good support uh, from all of them, which is nice. Okay, now we can look at all of this. So our car's looking pretty worn. Testing we'll look at in a little bit. Our 2002 chassis is coming along quite nice, nicely. The 2001 chassis is ready to move on to the CFD simulation. Our second upgrade of the season. That should be in place by Britain. Technology-wise, we are ready to get ourselves a five-star suspension. Let's go and get ourselves a five-star throttle. Then we've got the most performance that we could possibly have out of our car. Driving aid-wise, this just isn't going well. And I think it's because of how complex it is. I do think it is because of that. Um, we can upgrade our technology. And then we want to look at some engine testing so you can see we've now got spec 6 which is just awesome I mean you compare that to the first race of the season you can see how much performance we have got out of that and surely Peugeot is going to be up there as the best in the business now um, so a summary of that we want uh, well we haven't got anybody on development testing this time Uh, I mean, I think we can put 20%, 20%, 20%. I do think 40% is enough for us. I think really scale back this testing schedule to try and save some costs because I am a little bit worried that we are just leaking money. And I am trying to sort that out. Um... Right, let's perform that testing. Oof, didn't quite get a full bar on engine, which is disappointing. Disappointing. Um, but you know, we're 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 complaining about you know one little bar of stuff. Right, we're going to increase that, get that increased, um, and we've got one more. So, we're going to go for responsiveness. I mean, this, as I say, this is going to be a maxed out engine very, very soon. Which is really, really good. Uh, right, research wise, I think we're ready to pass on our stuff. Um, yeah, that's fine. Okay, pass on those research points. Nearly there with the driving aids. Oh, so close with the model design. Um, but we are so far ahead of schedule with that. And yeah, it's just a shame that we, uh, <laughs> we're not sticking with Peugeot next year, I guess. With how much we've upgraded this uh, engine. I'm hoping Ferrari give us a good engine for next year. Um... I hope we're, you know, there's a lot of engine downgrading from the FIA going into next season. But I guess we'll see. Uh, let's get our cars fixed up for the next Grand Prix. As I say, I think 40% will be enough. You know, our, our mechanics are just incredibly efficient. And it's a massive tool to have in our arsenal. Because we can essentially just scale back our testing program now, but still get the the, the same results, and that is going to massively save us costs in the in the long run. Uh, 
So I'm excited for Canada. I think it could turn out to be a, a very good Grand Prix for us. But we will see. So our cars are in ship shape condition, which is nice. Uh, all those deals are going ahead nicely. Can't think of anything else that I want to do with that. So let's head to the race. So setup wise, definitely for Canada, I think you want uh, more speed. Go for more grip, more braking, and one more on rain, just in case does rain this weekend uh, we are going to go with the sixth iteration of our engine I think everything else is is fine um, I am just gonna double check that we weren't given any new tires or anything no uh, hang on yes we have been given some new wet tires Yeah, that's fine. Fuel-wise, we are still at the same level. So we want to upgrade our wet weather tyres. Yeah, that's fine. We probably want to um, redirect some of those points towards grip. Um... Yeah, so we went soft with Denise last time. You know what? We're going to risk it. Uh, no, we're not. We're not. We're going to stick with the strategy. Because it's been work working, so if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Is the idea. That's fine. Um, let's push on to the next Grand Prix. Okay, so for qualifying, 17 degrees, very dry. Let's see how we get on in qualifying. Oh my word, 5th and 6th, that is an awesome performance. Wowee, I was not expecting that. So engine engine performance is really, really benefiting us here. Um, Mika Hakkinen takes your pole position. Damon Hill in 2nd, Sarah's in 3rd, with Alacy 4th, and we qualify 5th and 6th. We could be on for another podium here, if we're lucky. Um, but that is that is fantastic. Honestly, I, I'm just blown away by how much performance we're getting here. The, the works deal is like a cheat code at the moment. If you've got the testing capabilities. Uh, right, let's get into the race. I think it was overcast, wasn't it? So, uh, again, we're going to be one-stopping Mr. Rubens Barrichello. And it's whether we... Um, one stop Denise again. It seemed to work a treat for him in the last Grand Prix. Of course, that's Monaco, and that might not be representative of, um, you know, a normal track like this. But maybe we'll go for the the two stop. I will give him fresh boots for his second and third run. Whoops. Okay, let's see how we get on then in the race. It's another podium. It's another podium. And it is another third place for Pedro Diniz on the two-stop strategy there. The soft tyres definitely seem to be working a little bit better in the race. Another double points finish, though. Diniz with his second consecutive third place finish. Barrichello there in fifth for Sauber, um, grabbing two points. And Diniz grabbing uh, four points, I believe for that. Mika Hakkinen wins the race. Alacy in second. Diniz third. Badoa fourth. Barrichello fifth. And Panis rounds out the top six for Williams. Uh, Tuero seventh for Benetton. Both arrows in the top ten. And uh, Michael Schumacher just outside the top ten. Lots of attrition in this race uh, which is interesting. Including both McLaren. So that certainly helped us out. Uh, Saracen in an accident. And Hill with a gearbox issue. That means that Mika Hakkinen is now very much took over the lead of the Drivers' Championship. He's 10 points ahead of Damon Hill. Barrichello in 6th, Diniz in 7th there, meaning that we are very much in 3rd place in the Constructors' Championship at the moment. It looks like it's going to be a big battle 
with Williams between now and the end of the season. But that is, an, again, another awesome Grand Prix for us. We've made a little bit of money compared to what we went to Canada with. I'm just, just over the moon. Uh, let's have a little look then. So we made a small loss over the, the course of the last Grand Prix. Really not bothered about testing. We're ready to upgrade the cars. That's fine. Uh, we've got our new engine spec. I mean, the, the crazy thing is we are still... Um, we're still doing better engines. Uh, Goodyear's prepared to go for the works deal. That is a, a real... Um, a positive. We've got even better terms with Ferrari. Uh, Mobile's prepared to go into the works deal, which is good. We've made good progress with the talks with PlayStation. Uh, all is good in the hood. I'm, I'm just waiting for the big brick wall to come to us. Um, our potential FIA funding has gone up again. 29 million right now, which is really, really nice. Uh, let's go straight to our engine sponsor. So there you go. We're controlling the engine R&D next year. We want to get that guarantee in place from Ferrari. Um, works deal. Let's sign it up, baby. It's, again, another one-season deal, which I'm not wowed by. Um, oh, I was going to say, please say I've signed the correct deal. Uh, 2.1 million for our fuel, that's pretty decent. But again, it's one season, so we're unfortunately going to have this situation again next season where we're just, you know, making sure of all of our engine tyres and fuels at the start of the season. Hopefully, because we're already in talks with these guys um, and we'll be obviously working with them next season, we'll hopefully be in a good place with that. <clears throat> And once we've got the, the deal in place with, with Ferrari, we'll then be able to push loads of guys onto the cash sponsors and try and pick up our portfolio there. Okay, uh, our VIP offering. <clears throat> we are going to scale it down again to uh, some two-star because I really don't want to be spending too much on it going forward. Um, but yeah, we will see. Uh, engine wise we've got our brand new 7 spec engine tyre wise uh, we've got nothing new from Bridgestone as it stands nothing from um, fuel land either uh, we might want to do a little bit of tyre testing uh, coming up uh, let's hire the wind tunnel we are ready for that with our 2022 car or sorry 2002 car 20 years into the future there so let's get that to the next stage efficiency looking very very good uh, 2001 car is ready to move to some modeling which is good so we've got a, a good upgrade in the pipeline Technology-wise, we are ready to upgrade to a level 5 throttle, so that is all going to be as good as it can be. We are really, really pushing it um, with every aspect of the car this year. I'm hoping that our driving aids are ready. Oh, it's not quite, but after research testing, it should be, and then we can get it ratified by the FIA. Fingers crossed. I think this is going to be the third time we're passing it through, so I'm really hoping... That, that will work. Uh, game is just feeling a little bit fuzzy, so I am going to save it once again. Uh, Testing-wise, as I said, I don't think um, we need to really worry about this too much. I am going to add a couple of more mechanics onto the development testing. Um, it is fairly cheap to test here, so I am prepared to put in a little bit more money than I, I probably usually would. So let's perform that testing. Oh. oh no, we have got a full bar of engine. So, th I mean, this could, could very well max out our, our engine here. So improvement wise, um, we want, uh, we'll make it as super reliable. We'll give the extra responsiveness 
um, and extra fuel tolerance. I mean, that is just going to be a ridiculous engine. And one more round of, of uh, engine testing, and we will have fully maxed out our engine. So by round 10, um, what we go, so we're going to get that one for round 9. Yeah, by round 10, we're going to have our maxed out engine. <laughs> Oh my word. I mean that is just amazing, isn't it? <laughs> As I say, it's like a cheat code, it really is. Like a cheat code. Um yeah, let's pass on the, the, the research findings from testing. So we should be able to ratify this now. Come on, fingers crossed. Oh, they've rejected it again. Right, we're gonna move on to something else for a while, because I think Getting the rest up to level 3 is probably going to be more beneficial. Um, it should be quicker, I think, than getting a level 5 in there. Do we need the wind? Yeah, we definitely do need the wind tunnel still. Nothing there. Right, let's get the cars fixed up then. Not too worn, surprisingly enough, despite the amount of testing we've done. But our cars are, are super reliable at the moment. Doing a great job. Um, let's get those spares built. You know, we're just we're just smashing it, which I'm really really happy about. Because I was really worried at the start of the season when when we revealed that it was a 51% chassis. I, I honestly thought we were in for a really rough season and uh, we weren't going to get anything but we are absolutely flying at the moment and I just couldn't be more proud of the team really. Um, let's see if we can beef out these departments at all. I don't think so. Um, we will headhunt. No, nothing there. So we'll just leave that for another round. Nothing else here. We'll take a quick look at the news. So victory for Mika Hakkinen. Another third place for Deniz. Uh, Sauber is happy to see both cars in the top six. Uh, Williams have got a works deal with Mercedes, which is very nice for them. Um, I don't really know why we went for... Ferrari over Mercedes. Perhaps next year we'll look at going for Mercedes, but I do think it's going to be tougher to get into. Uh, nothing else in there. We're never the favourite, which is a shame. But we're having a great season, a really good season. Right, let's get into the next Grand Prix then. Uh, keep the orders as they, as they are. Setup-wise... Uh, we'll go back to our 2-2 two, two and maybe one on the overtaking. Just to balance it out a little bit. Both of them are doing a, a superb job. Uh, and Barrichello is going to try the soft tyres this weekend. We of course have Upgrade number seven. For that, I don't think we've got anything else. No, nope, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Scrutiny wise, we're not really bothering with that. So let's head to the next Grand Prix and see what we can pull off here. 31 degrees, overcast, average uh, wind speed. Of course, we are going for the soft tyres with both drivers this weekend to truly see what we can do in qualifying. So here we go, four quali. Ooh, ninth and tenth. That's a bit of a step backwards for us. Um, that's a real shame. But, you know, there are going to be bumps in the road. But Barrichello, rather worryingly, still three tenths down on Deniz. Not entirely sure where that's coming from. Perhaps just a bad lap. Uh, right, let's go into race day then. Um, we're gonna 
no, we're going to go for two stop strategies for both drivers, I think. Um, I think that sort of makes sense. Let's see how we get on. Hey, fourth and seventh. So I think hard tyres are the way to go with Barrichello. Soft tyres don't seem to have worked as well. Um, for him, but Pedro Diniz, fourth place, he is on some sort of form at the moment. Damon Hill's your winner, Mika Hakkinen in second, Saracen in third, Diniz finishes fourth, not too far off the podium again, uh, Lacey fifth, Panna sixth, and uh, Barrichello finishing just outside the points. Now that could hurt us in our race with Williams. Diniz, uh, two points ahead of Barrichello now. So he goes up to sixth in the championship. Uh, we are still third, three points ahead of Williams. Okay. Uh, wow, we made a big profit at that last Grand Prix. That's what we like to see. Got a new star worker in the commercial department. We're ready to upgrade. Don't care about testing. We're ready to upgrade that. Engine sponsors come through. Uh, fuel sponsors complained. I don't really care. The works deal has been signed. We've agreed better terms with Goodyear. We've agreed better terms with Mobile. Uh, and we have a deal in place with PlayStation. Doesn't look like we've made any progress in the Ferrari deal. Okay. They're saying something about driving aids. Uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of folks have come in with their one stars. We're just well ahead of the curve with driving aids, and maybe that's where it's going right for us. We've got the driving aids in place. That's uh, helping us disguise the dog of a car that we we think we have. Uh, news wise. McLaren has got a team sponsorship with Player Life. Um, Damon Hill wins the race. He also got pole position. Ferrari have got a development deal with Bridgestone. Uh, there you go. Good. Uh, Zonta is going to Jordan. Anything else? Uh, out there doesn't look like it okie dokie fair enough let's head straight to the commercial land uh, we are ready to sign our one season deal with playstation which is good we'd like to get that up a little bit we've got the bonus there so fast fuel upgrades fast tire upgrades um, we are still controlling that which is nice. I think we're, we're just sort of sticking with all of this. Silverstone has a pretty good um, thing. So we will up the ante a little bit with that. But now we're starting to make a profit. That is a really good sign. Okay, and that's ready to move to the wind tunnel. So let's get that sorted. That's nice. Um, we're halfway through next year's car as well. Ready to get that going. Let's get our throttle upgraded. And driving aid. There you go. So it must be something to do with the complexity. And we finally got something approved. So we've got some automatic gears, which is nice. Let's have a little look at some power brakes. So 15% on that. We can get our new driving aid. We can also upgrade our technology. So everything looking good there. Um, yeah, I don't think we really want to do anything else with, our, with all of that, if I'm honest. That's a pretty good amount of testing. I think I'm fine. Just doing exactly the same. Yeah. So we should get a fully maxed out engine here. 
if my maths is correct. One, two, three, and four. Perfect. A fully maxed out engine. Like You can't get better than that, can you? You cannot get better than that. Um, Tyre-wise, we've not been given anything else. We've not been given any more fuels. I'm not that bothered, really. Um, that's fine. Let's uh, pass on the research stuff. 2001 chassis is making good progress. Our 2002 car is so nearly finished. Yeah. That's good. That's really good. Alright, let's get the cars fixed up. Don't think there's any damage on them, nope. So we should have uh, enough. Uh, and hopefully we can have a good showing at the British Grand Prix. It's uh, more of a power circuit than, than France, of course. So we should be able to show off the capability of our engine. Because we have got another new spec in there. Spec 9. Of course, we're not uh, we're not going to do any more engine testing for the rest of the year because we've maxed it out. So, again, we should be able to scale back our testing program somewhat because we can keep the same amount of mechanics on testing and spend a lot less money. Start saving up for next season. Which will be good, and maybe we can think about getting in an even better designer. Because we are going to have to pay for Stefano next year, that is the, the one thing. Uh, we are going to keep going with all of that. Cash sponsor-wise, we still got Pearl in next year. We've got four more to sign by the end of the season. I think we should be capable of that. Especially if we go for some... Oh, they were on the, the same aggressiveness, actually. Which is really interesting. The Niz, just quicker at this stage of the season. Which I find really, really interesting. Because the Niz, in theory, shouldn't be as good a driver, but very much has shown that he is. New automatic gears, new spec of engine, uh, double new spec of engine. Oh, we must have put the upgrade on last Grand Prix. What an idiot. <laughs> no wonder we didn't have as good a performance as I thought. Uh, we are going to go back for hard tyres for Rubens Barrichello. And Denise can have his soft tyres. That all looks fine. Let's get into it then. Okie dokie then, it is 20 degrees and dry for your qualifying today. Let's see how we get on. Oh, only 8th and 9th. Again, just a little bit disappointing, a little bit disconcerting. Um, up at the sharp end, McLaren go for a 1-2. Damon Hill and Stefan Sarazin uh, managing to take a 1-2. Uh, Hakkinen in third for Ferrari, Panis fourth for Williams, Badawa in fifth for Ferrari, Alesi sixth for Williams and Takagi in seventh, Barrichello uh, eighth with Deniz in ninth. Uh, down at the bottom, Giancarlo Fisichella once again propping up the rear. Light rain for the race, which will certainly help Deniz. And uh, to be fair, Barrichello has, has got an excellent... Um, Excellent wet weather rating as well. We're going to one-stop this race. And hopefully we can do something good here. But, um, yeah, perhaps after the flying start to this episode, some more points would just be good. Um, we're going to go slightly longer with Denise and then slightly shorter on the run-in. Let's see how we get on in the race. Fourth and fifth. Very good. Barrichello back to beating uh, Pedro Diniz. And uh, Michael Schumacher managing to get up into the top six. That shows what a good wet weather driver he is. Damon Hill manages to lap the field in his McLaren. 
What a race for him. Panis finishing second for Williams. Hacken in third for Ferrari. Uh, double points finish once again for Saba with Michael Schumacher in sixth. Jacques Villeneuve is seventh. Tuero eighth. Coulthard ninth. And Frensen rounds out your top ten. Uh, not too much attrition in the race either. Nakano and Rossett uh, both out with hydraulics issues. Zonta out um, with a driver error. Badawa uh, with a suspension. Alessi engine failure and Sarazen a gearbox failure. Denise is still 6th in the championship on 18 points. Uh, Barrichello there in 17th. We are still in 3rd in the Constructors' standings. Very nice indeed. That is what we are talking about. So, uh, we have got round 10, 11, 12, and then 13, 14, 15, 16. So 13, 14, 15, 16, that would be four. So we've got another three, four um, sort of season coming up. Uh, of course, we'll, we will probably finish off this episode there. Uh, we did make a small loss in the last episode, which is a shame. Just have a quick little look at our um, deals for next season. So we've got two bonuses with them. We will be controlling the R&D at mobile next season, which is good. And uh, we've got engine upgrade priority with Ferrari. Uh, so all we need now is a little bit of uh, a guarantee. And then we can basically move everybody off the Ferrari deal after that. Uh Next season's car should be pretty much finished. It is, uh, as is the upgrade to this year's car. So we should be seeing some really big progress in the next episode once again. And hey, what 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 else could we do? Could we go and realistically win a race in the next episode? You know, with Belgium coming up, it, it's a distinct possibility. But we'll just have to keep our fingers and toes crossed but if you have enjoyed it give it a big thumbs up down below subscribe for plenty more grand prix world content and i hope you guys are having a wonderful day thanks for watching and goodbye